Hello and welcome to our 16th session where we are actually now implementing the logic of making our object that is the dropper drop after 3 seconds. So, here the logic that we want to use here is in the game initially as the player starts there is no dropping obstacle he is just moving and after about 3 seconds I want some obstacle to drop from the sky onto the ground. This is the logic we have already created the dropper and we understood how to use the time dot time and create a delay of 3 seconds and how to implement it by using the if statement. But right now we were printing it to the console but we want the actual logic to be applied now. So, for this what we are now going to do is the very first thing is as soon as I stop the start the playback the dropper has to drop down it has to create an animation and it has to drop on the ground. How are we going to do it? Well, using physics and to use physics in unity we use rigid body that is what we will do it first. So, now coming back here now in unity now I am in unity and here I already have created this dropper the dropper is here, but right now when I play the game what is happening is that dropper is remaining in the sky it is not dropping. So, how to make it drop? I will stop the playback I will select the dropper and in this dropper now what I want is to add physics to this dropper. So, I will come to this view here I will press alt left click and rotate and see it. So, I have the dropper here I want this to drop down and for this I am going to come here select dropper and in add component I will type rigid body I will add rigid body to it and once I add rigid body to it you have the rigid body panel open here I will leave the mass at one unit and then you have here use gravity enabled. So, once it is enabled now I will go to file and I will save it and when I actually play this now what happens is see now it is dropping down. So, you can see even in our game view I will stop this and when I play it you can see this dropping down say it is dropping down. Now, only thing what I want is I will stop the playback I does not want it to drop immediately I want it to drop after 3 seconds. So, initially I want this gravity to be disabled and also I want this mesh renderer to be disabled because uh, when the game has started when the viewer is seeing here it should not be lying idle floating in the air like this it would not look good. So, if I switch off mesh renderer see it is not visible now ok. So, I want the dropper mesh renderer and this gravity to be off initially and after 3 seconds it should become on. So, you already know that in our previous session how do we catch actually a particular property of a game object we did it if you remember when we changed the color of our uh, walls what we did we used a term called get component get component what it does is in any of the gamer gaming uh, that is object you can get either transform mesh renderer or this uh, rigid body any of this component can be obtained using the command get component. So, now instead of switching this off here I will switch on mesh renderer and gravity here I will keep it on. I will go to file save this and now I will come to my dropper file that is to my dropper script and in this dropper script in start as soon as the game starts what I want is I will now first get my component which is the first component I need I need get component and how to get the component I have already told you we use lesser than and greater than sign and between this sign you have to write the name of your component and if you come back here to unity the name 
here is mesh renderer with M and R capital. So, now I will come back here and in between this lesser than and greater than sign I type mesh renderer and then since this is a function I have to end it with parenthesis. So, this is the component we are getting and for this component what I want is I want this component has a property and to assess that property add a period and I am going to type enabled. Enabled is its property and I will set this property to false and I will end it with semicolon. So, now what I did? I got the component mesh renderer and in it I assess the property enabled and I set it to false. So, now I will go to file and save it. Now, if I come back to unity allow the script to get compiled and once it is compiled now what we are doing in the dropper instead of switching off this mesh renderer in the inspector we are doing it through the code. So, now if I play it as soon as I start the playback see now what happens is see the mesh renderer disappeared you are not seeing it. The reason why you are not seeing is it is disabled as soon as the game starts. So, now I will stop the playback. Now, I will apply the same logic to rigid body. So, now I will come back to unity here and now I does not want the gravity to work initially. So, for this again I will use the same line get component and this time in open uh, that is in lesser than and greater than sign between this I am now going to call another component which is rigid body R and B is capital rigid body and then I will add open close parenthesis then here the property I am going to call is use gravity. So, now I will type use gravity and I will set this to false and I will end it with a colon. So, now I am I will go to file to save and then I will come back here and now when it compiles I am seeing an error. If I come to console window what is the error it is saying the type of namespace name rigid body could not be found. Why am I getting it? See if I select the dropper and if I come to the inspector see the rigid body spelling here. See rigid body is one word here. So, unity is considering it as one word and so B is small letter, but in my script what I did was I have added a capital letter. So, this is the error. So, I will put back small letter here. I will replace it with small letter. I will save it. Now, I will come back to unity allow the script to get compiled and now we have no error. I will clear the console we have no error now. Now, if I save this and if I play the game now you can see that it is neither dropping nor visible initially see you can see here use gravity is switched off and also mesh renderer is switched off. So, I will stop the playback. Now, before we continue I will come back to the script here. One thing I want you to be familiar with is now I will just introduce you to another term which we call as caching a reference. What is this caching a reference? So, a simple definition is caching is a technique of storing frequently used data or information in memory so that it can be easily assessed when needed this is the definition. Now, if you come back to my script in my script I am using two components one is the mesh renderer and another is the rigid body. Now, this mesh renderer and the rigid body if we are frequently going to call it that is right now here we are calling at only one place, but in a script say we are calling the mesh renderer at about 30 places. 
or this rigid body at 20 places then instead of writing this statement everywhere this makes the game not optimized means every time it has to go and load this component. So, now what I am telling the computer is I create a variable create a container and store this information data information in that variable so that it is readily available to you whenever you want it. So, unity need not go in the game object and search for that component. So, for this we use the same technique like variable here. So, what we are now going to do is this entire component name we are going to cache it with a variable. So, for this I will come to the start of my game and in the start of the game I am going to call the first component as renderer. Renderer is the name I give for this first component and what is the type of component that I am using here? This is a mesh renderer. So, the type of component is mesh renderer and the name of the variable is renderer. So, renderer is a variable and the type of variable is mesh renderer and I am going to end it with semicolon. So, now I have declared one variable called as renderer as mesh renderer and similarly I will declare one more variable as rigid body. So, rigid and I will keep b also small because it is one word ok. So, I will declare one more variable rigid body and the type of this variable is rigid body. So, I have declared two variables now one variable renderer which is a mesh renderer and another is rigid body what is the difference between this name and this name here uh, I have to keep this b also small do not forget here r is capital rigid body is type of variable and when I have made it small letter this is the name of the variable. So, this is a convention we use in coding. So, both name is rigid body only, but both are not same here R is capital means it means it is the type of variable which unity knows it is a rigid body variable and when we are naming it we are starting it with small letter ok. So, we declared two variables one is the mesh renderer which is equal to renderer and another is rigid body which is equal to rigid body. Now, what we do is as soon as the game starts I want to attach these two values with the specific component. Now, right now renderer is a mesh renderer rigid body is a rigid body component, but it has no data in it it is just a variable and I am going to allot the data as soon as the game starts what I am going to do is I am going to make this renderer equal to this component I will copy this component I will cut it and I will put it here. So, renderer will be equal to get component mesh renderer and I will end it with semicolon. So, I will remove this line enabled as of now and so what I am doing I am storing this component mesh renderer in a variable called renderer and similarly I will call the another uh, that is a variable we declared rigid body equal to this component. So, the component get component rigid body I will cut it and paste it here get component rigid body is equal to rigid body I will also remove this line. Okay. So, now I will save this. So, now what we have done is we have declared two variables one is a mesh renderer and another is a rigid body and as soon as the game starts we are allotting our components mesh renderer to this renderer because this script is attached to the dropper means the dropper game objects mesh renderer will be equal to renderer the dropper game objects rigid body will be equal to this rigid body. So, now once we declare these two uh, that is uh, components 
Now, what we are going to do is to assess its property now for renderer I am going to type period and I am going to call this enable equals to false and I will end it with semicolon because this renderer is equal to get component mesh renderer that all the properties of this mesh renderer is available to renderer. So, I am putting renderer dot enabled is equal to false and then the next thing is I will put this rigid body dot and for this I have to use use gravity use gravity is its property also I will set it to false. So, both I have set it to false ok. Now, we have refactored our code and we have stored the data of our mesh renderer and rigid body component in a variable. We are calling that variable and we are enabling it as false and use gravity as false. Now, I will go here save the file and now I will come back to unity and see if there are a there is an error. Uh, so, if I double click it. Uh, what is the error I am getting? It is saying that use gravity is not available. So, what is the problem we have here is I have made a spelling mistake gravity I have forgotten to put r ok. Now, I will save this and I will come back to unity now allow for the script to compile and once it is compiled there are no errors I will clear this. Now, see what happens is when I play the game as soon as I start the playback see our dropper becomes invisible and also it is not dropping. Now, I will stop the playback and now I have a challenge for you. You have to now make it fall after the time to wait duration. So, now what you have to do if you have set the time to wait to around 5 seconds after 5 seconds this dropper which is invisible and which is in the air should suddenly drop down. So, for this what you have to now do is you have to add just two lines of code and make our object become visible and fall after it has waited for the right amount of time. So, I think now you have got the logic well pause the video go back to the script and try to do it yourself. This is if you can do it, it means that you are following this concept very well. So, stop the video and try to do it yourself ok. I think that you have successfully done this because this is very important because as you are working if you have successfully done this video or uh, sorry done this challenge then you are following it very well ok. So, now what I have to now do is I have to come back here I am just going to show how to do this. Now, you have these two lines render dot enabled is equal to false rigid body use gravity is equal to false. I will copy both these lines now and here I have in update I have added this if time dot time is greater than time to wait in this block. I will delete this debug line and I am going to now paste this code that is it I will just refactor it. So, I will move this rigid body with a tab and only thing here is instead of false I will set this value to true in both the cases I will set its value to true and after setting its value to, to true I will go to file save it. Now, I will come back here and uh, that is I will come back to this uh, script here unity and allow the script to get compiled and clear this console window because there is no error. Then now see when I play the game I have set the time to wait to 3 seconds. Now, what happens is after 3 seconds you can see the game object is dropping I will stop the playback. And if I set this uh, wait period to 5 seconds now and if I save this and if I execute the game now after 5 seconds 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 
see it dropped okay so it is working and one thing we forgot here is see this dropper is actually an hit object means whenever this dropper so now what happens is if I play the of game and I have set the duration to 5 seconds and after 5 second the object is going to drop see it is dropped but when I bring the player and when I touch this see when I touch this object it, nothing is happening see nothing is happening to this because now if I stop the game See what is happening is for this dropper we have not attached the object hit script. So, if I come back to project and if I attach the object hit script now what should happen as soon as the player goes and hits this object it should turn red ok. So, now I will save it and now bug now what happens you see. I will play the game and uh, I will have I will stop the game I will set this duration to 2 seconds so that let it fall faster. Now I will play the game and when I am playing the game now after 2 seconds the object will drop see what is happening is as soon as it dropped it turned red. So, once I attach this dropper with this object hit script actually what I want I want this object to turn red only when my player comes and hits it, but as soon as it is dropping it is getting red. Why is it happening like this? That is because we have added it a project and uh, that is script and we have told if there is a collusion then execute the change color script. We have not specifically told that the collusion should happen only with the player. Now, what is happening? The collusion is happening with the ground that is with the plane with the floor. So, as soon as it is touching the floor collusion is happening and it is turning red. Now, comes the challenge for you where you have to now tell the computer that only when the player is hit you should turn red and you should not turn red when some other object is hitting you and that was the reason why in the initially when the game started we lifted the player a little above the ground or otherwise as soon as you start the game the ground used to turn red because the thing is the collusion is happening or the score used to run. So, we had put the score uh, we had attached the score script to that player. So, as soon as you start the game the score started running because it was already colliding with the ground. So, that is why we moved it around a little above the ground. So, we are going to uh, debug this bug in our next session by understanding the use of tags in unity. So, with this I will conclude this session and let us understand about tags in our next session. Next session. Thank you.